Winter is the ultimate test for electric cars. Cold batteries, slow charging, reduced range, and let's be honest, a few myths out there. So today, we're doing a full real world winter road trip. From here in Liverpool, over to Derby, over to Sheffield, and then back to Liverpool. That's 300 miles of driving in one day. Real roads, real cold, real friends, and the real stats right here. Let's see what happens when you take an EV out on a winter trip. Welcome to Bengo's Electric. So, a winter EV road trip starts before you even get in the car. The night before, I plugged in the car and set up pre-conditioning so the car was going to be nice and warm and hopefully the battery would be nice and toasty before driving off, just to give the car the best chance there is. So with that done, let's go to Ben in the morning who will talk you through a little bit more. Good morning, it's a cold bright start today, but minus one, half seven in the morning. And the car has started to precondition now, ready for me to set off at 8 a.m. So I can stay inside nice and warm, but I'm outside talking to you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There's quite a lot of enjoyment kind of being out here, watching the car do its work while everyone else is out there scraping the ice off the cars. And I don't have to do any of that because the car will do it itself. And it's only taken about five minutes for it to get up to 22 degrees internally. It's just waiting for the rest of the ice to clear, but it should clear by the eight o'clock that I've set. So the plan was simple. Pick up my mates around Liverpool. Let's go and get some breakfast. We've got some empty stomachs to feed over in Speak before the main brunt of the journey over to Derbyshire to Kedleston Hall, a National Trust site. Again, more on that site in a little bit. Then we're gonna go up to Sheffield over to Meadow Hall for a bit of shopping and then into the actual city center for a bite to eat and a little look around the Christmas markets. And then finally back over to the Liverpool area, drop off my friends and get myself home with one or two charging stops. We'll see about that, shall we? So on paper, yeah, easy. But in the real world in winter, well, let's see what this journey was like. As I set off towards Liverpool area to pick up my friends, you could instantly see the winter behavior as the efficiency started to climb right up. We had an efficiency at the start of 307.7 watt hours per mile, which is roughly around about 3.2, 3.25 miles per kilowatt hour. But that's completely normal when the battery is a bit colder. At the end of the day, it was still in the minuses when I was driving at early in the morning, it's not optimal temperatures, so the battery isn't going to be optimal, let's be honest. And with the heating on in the car as well, the car is having to work a little bit harder than it did in summer. But it's not the end of the world, still 3.25 miles per kilowatt hour. Some cars don't even get that in summer. So I picked up the gang, spirits were high, excited for the trip, stomachs were empty. So first stop was to Toby Carvery in Speak to get some breakfast. We arrived there with 86% of the battery left, 293 miles of predicted range, the Tesla was stating. And sadly, the same wintry efficiency, around 300 miles per kilowatt hour, but not too bad. But that's the thing about EVs. Early on, you pay, as we'll call, the winter tax. The efficiency is going to be higher, but the more you drive it and you get into the drive, the battery is going to warm up and it should start boosting the efficiency. You should now become more standard that you're used to, but it's always that first little bit. So on road trips, they can still be quite efficient. It's the stop starting in the winter months where the battery has to keep coming back up from cold, which could become an issue. Now with breakfast demolished, it's time to get on to the main brunt of the journey down to Kettleston Hall. The car predicted an 87 mile journey and we should arrive with around about 50% of the battery. Not terrible, but again, it's gonna be worse in winter, isn't it? So down the M62 and down the M6 to Stoke-on-Trent and then the A roads over into Derbyshire. And we actually arrived with 52%. So an improvement of 2% just from decent driving again, as the battery started to heat up a little bit from this longer drive, we gained 2%, not too bad, I must add. The efficiency on that leg was 265.5 watt hours per mile, or around 3.77 miles per kilowatt, if you prefer, it's in that unit. 
big improvement compared to the earlier leg, again because the battery is heated up and the car's becoming a little bit more efficient. Great news. Now Kettleston Hall is one of those places that looks absolutely incredible all year round, but especially in winter it's given that lovely quiet atmospheric kind of conditions. It's an 18th century neoclassical mansion designed by Robert Adam. We've got huge pillars, sweeping hallways, and a massive enormous grounds, which just looked like it, you were stepping into Dalton Abbey or something, for an example. It was beautiful. So we walked around inside the house and had a look around the grounds, and we took some pictures and just took in the views and the fresh air that we got in on that day. And there's something about mixing this modern EV brand new car and this 250 year old mansion. It just had a really weird feeling to it. It just made me smile. You got the old meeting the new. It was a lovely trip out. We spent around about two hours here and in that time the car had lost 2% down to 50%. Now there's two reasons for that. The first reason was sentry mode. I had sentry mode on. I always have it on when the car is out in public in car parks because there's nothing worse like coming back and you find that someone's dinted your car by slamming a door into it or hit it trying to get into a space. So I always like to have that on for a little bit of reassurance. The next reason was preconditioning the cabin. It was still a cold day, zero degrees. I wanted the car to be nice and warm for when we all got into it. So around about five minutes before we got in, went on the app and preconditioned the car ready to go. Got to a nice toasty temperature. And I don't think that two percent is bad, but I think the benefits of it was 100% worth it. The next stop was Meadow Hall in Sheffield, 46 miles away from Kettleston where we are. So I put that into the car's sat nav and it estimated we'd arrive with 36%. We actually arrived with 32, not too bad. Again, you don't really have to worry about range anxiety. The car is pretty bang on, a couple percent here and there. As you saw earlier, we arrived with more, this time we arrived with a little bit less. A little bit of learning, but it's not dramatically less that you need to worry that your car's gonna run out of charge on the side of the motorway. Let's be honest, that's not gonna happen. So we did a little bit of shopping, stretched our legs, and we thought it'd be nice to be on the inside, nice and warm as the sun started to set. It's winter, it starts to set at like 3 p.m., let's be honest. From Meadow Hall, we journeyed into the city centre of Sheffield to grab some dinner, basically. And at the same time, we thought we'd go and have a look at the Christmas markets. You know, get those proper festive vibes now. We're in those winter months. But again, while we were out, I decided to pre-condition the car, preheat it up before we returned. Because there's nothing worse than getting in a cold car especially when you can heat it up. So the car then had 29% battery before we headed off back over the Pennines to Merseyside. Again, worth every percent just to have that nice warm car to get in. It's definitely one of the biggest perks of owning an EV. If you agree, let us know in the comments. Do you always precondition your car before getting in, in summer or winter? Now, this is where planning can make a big difference so of course, you could in this car, and a lot of cars, just put your postcode in of your destination and it would take you back there. And if you needed to charge, it would let you know where to charge. I knew 29% wasn't enough to get all the way back to Merseyside. But with a little bit of planning involved, you can save some money. And that is exactly what I did. So I decided to first put in Rotherham Superchargers, which is a brand new service station and site just about five miles out from Sheffield. And I decided what we'll do is we'll charge there just enough to get us over the Pennines to Burt Services, which I've visited multiple times. And I knew by the time we'd get there, the off-peak charging rate would start. So it would be cheaper. And that is the plan. Let's get this journey as cheap as possible, like all journeys. So I manually routed to the Rotherham supercharger in the car and I predicted we'd arrive with around 25%. And that's including the energy for battery preconditioning, which heats up the battery to get maximum charging speed. Something you'll definitely want in winter because charging a slow battery can take a long, long time. We actually arrived with 24% and I would call that spot on, let's be honest. I plugged in at 24% 
And then I started to route the Birch supercharger into the car, because then it would estimate how long we'd need to stay here for. And that was four minutes. We only had to stay at this charger for four minutes. Just enough time to go for a quick bathroom break. By now we have done 186 miles, averaging 280 watt hours per mile, or 3.57 miles per kilowatt hour. The car said we're gonna arrive at Birch with 15%, and we actually came in with around 13% after driving 250 miles in total now. Again, pretty bang on, you don't have to worry about range anxiety. The efficiency was 290 watt hours per mile, 3.45, miles per kilowatt, again, including the battery preconditioning that we've done throughout the trip. That's where the efficiency does go down. But considering the weather and that, the speed, and the train going over the Pennines, I don't think that's too bad. And for the final stretch, I dialed in a postcode near my friend's address, where we're dropping them off, so the car could calculate how long we needed to stay here at Birch to charge for. Just for one caveat, I increased the uh, arrival energy. By default, it's at 10%, but because I was dropping off multiple people and then getting home myself, I needed to have a little bit more than 10%. I dialed it up to 60%. Now, for me, I don't mind overcharging at superchargers because thanks to you guys, I have some free supercharging miles to use. And if you would like some free supercharging on your brand new Tesla, click the referral link down below. And at the moment, in countries without FSD, you can currently get 650 free supercharging miles. And if you're lucky enough to have full self-driving, Europe coming soon, you can currently get three months of full self-driving supervised using the same link in the description. So if you're looking at journeying into electric cars and getting yourself a Tesla like myself, make sure you use the referral link at the bottom. Get some free goodies. Why wouldn't you? So after dialing the arrival engine, it gave us a 30 minute charge to get up to 80% so we could arrive at the first address with around about 60%. Not too bad, stuck Netflix on and watched Friday night dinner in the car. Wasn't an inconvenience, we needed some fresh air, a little bit of a stop anyway. And that was it. I dropped them all off and I made it home. I actually got home with 60%. The efficiency for that journey had improved. Over the last 57 miles, 240 watt hours per mile. That's just over four miles per kilowatt hour. That's the best of the day. We had the battery at its peak condition as we finished supercharging, and we kept that speed going on the motorway. So the efficiency followed, which is great. But over the whole trip, we had an efficiency of 281 watt hours per mile, 3.5-ish miles per kilowatt hour. And I think for winter in that car, that's pretty good. Yes, summer, you're gonna be pushing an extra mile per kilowatt. You're in the 4.5s, even five miles per kilowatt. But this is winter, and it's true that EVs do lose range in winter. There's no getting away from that because of the battery chemistry. But this has proven that it is still possible to do these journeys in an EV in the winter. There's no issue at all. So, what did I prove? Winter definitely changes how an EV behaves. Like I've said, there's no getting away from that. You're gonna lose some range from that cold battery. But with a bit of planning, or even letting the car plan for you, it's absolutely fine. It's as easy as doing a trip in the summer. There's nothing to worry about. And you've even got the benefit of getting into a warm car at any point of the journey, and especially the start. You're not out there scratching the ice off your window and getting into a cold car waiting for it to warm up, you can still be in bed if you wanted. I hope this gave you a real insight to what it's like to drive an EV a bit of a longer distance in winter. And I hope it makes you think that actually EVs are fine for me and they can handle what I'm going to put them through. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at some tips to improve your range in the winter months. Because a few little changes you could eke out a lot more range. So stick around for that video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Don't forget to like and comment. Let me know what you think about EVs in the winter and what trips have you done in the winter and how have you dealt with that. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.